Welcome today. Glad you're in church. Are you glad you're here today? Say amen. amen. All right. We're going to have a good time in God's house today. Yeah, go ahead and give him a praise thanks today. It's all right. Nothing wrong with that. Just before Tom comes today and shares with you, our praise team, how great is our God, uh, along with that thought and that uh, portion of, uh, of Scripture today, I find in Psalm 93, it says, The Lord reigneth. Aren't you glad today? That's a declaration of exactly who He is. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith He hath girded Himself, the world also is established or established that it, it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. And as he closes out this short little psalm, he says this, Thy testimonies are very sure. I like that. Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. Holiness becometh thy house. You and I are the house or the habitation. We are the temple of the living God. Father, we thank you that we have a God who reigns. We're thankful today that we have a God who loves us. We're thankful today that we have a God who sent his only begotten, the, the one who came and condescended and came down to this sin-infested earth and hung up on a cross and died there providing the means of grace, forgiveness, and mercy. Thank you, Lord. We cannot thank you enough. Lord, I praise you. Lord, as I left my house this morning and as I was driving here to the church and as I was driving along and just thanking you for your mercy, thanking you, Lord, you let us see another day to serve you, to know that our God is with us and for us today and just knowing that you were going to do something grand and glorious and magnificent and wonderful and beyond measure and beyond what whether we could really, really think. And as a matter of fact, exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. That's what you do. And we pray that spirit of God will just permeate into our spirit today and Lord overwhelm us with you. May we worship you. May we love you. May we serve you. May today eruption of praise just overtake this church today. May people not be ashamed to glorify their God. Not ashamed to lift up their hands and to praise you. Lord, that's not a denominational thing. That's a Bible thing. And Lord, you say that let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We are to praise you. We are to worship you. And we are to submit ourselves in obedience unto your leadership, your grace. Thank you that you love us. Thank you didn't throw the clay away. Thank you that, Lord, you took us and you're molding and you're shaping and fashioning us into being something that will bring honor to your name today. Have your way in this church, in this meeting. May, Lord, hearts be Lord, place before your throne today. And if there's any heart that's lacking, Jesus, may they come to you today and receive you as their personal Savior. The fast folks carrying burdens and struggles and trials, thank God as we're going to see today in our continuing study in Romans, thank God we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Thank you that, Lord, we're not beat down, we're lifted up. We're not defeated, Lord, we're delighted. Praise God, we're not victims, we're victors. We are on the winning side. Christ in us, the very hope today that we have in our life is worthy of our praise. So, Lord, pour out your spirit upon us. Be honored in this house. Be glorified in this place. Lord, we love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And may you today be exalted is my, my desire, my prayer, as I'm sure it is the desire of each one here today. We open our hearts and say, Lord, do in us what you need to do. Lord, clean us up. Purify us, Lord, use us, encourage us, strengthen us, and Lord, let us exalt you today, for you are God, and you are good. Amen. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. And all God's servants said, Amen. Amen. Isn't he a good God? Amen. Amen. Traveling for the Lord many years ago. I had a lot of heart. 
take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Gotta make it to heaven somehow. Though the devil tempts me and he tries to turn me around. He's offered everything that's got a name. All the wealth I want. Worldly fame, if I could still, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. in the world that will ever take the place of God's love. Silver and gold can never buy my detracts from above. When my soul needs healing, I begin to feel it is proud. I can say thank the Lord I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Gotta make it to heaven somehow. Oh, the devil tears me and he tries to turn me around. He's offered everything that's Still, I wouldn't take nothing on my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing on my journey now. Gotta make it to heaven somehow. Though the devil tempts me and he tries to turn me around. Offered everything that's got a name, all the wealth I want. Worldly fame, if I could still, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, if I could still, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey. Raging at my feet, I can. 
living God this morning. Amen. Now would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you already go a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Well, there is power, power, is wonder working. Now it's in the blood. your king. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power. It's in the blood of the Precious blood of the Lamb. Yes, there's power, power, wonder working power. It's in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power. It's in the precious blood of the Lamb. One more. Yes, there is power, power, wonder working power. It's in the blood. I want to invite, bring Harrison on down here and the family. Y'all come on, get on the platform. We want you up here. Amen. And with Queen Mary. Yes, indeed. All right. Hey, Randy. Good to see you, brother. You and your bride. Y'all come on up here. Bring that baby. Amen. Isn't he a handsome young man? Isn't he a handsome big man? Yes, indeed. Y'all come on around. Come on, family. Get up here with us. We're looking forward to what we're going to do here for the next few moments. Amen. What a great blessing today. This is one of the things I really enjoy being a part of. And I want to thank today this family for Ryan and Mia asking me to to uh, dedicate Harrison to the Lord. It's an honor for me to be able to have that opportunity and blessing. We want to welcome to this, I believe it's a sacred time for Ryan and also Mia along with the family and Harrison and uh, to give thanks to dedicate Harrison to the Lord in thanksgiving that God has shared this precious life with this couple to bring up in the love, the nurture, and the admonition of the Lord. Scripture tells us children are a heritage of the Lord, and we are blessed to have children. 
And this is a blessed occasion for this family, and I had the privilege, and I've had the, pr the privilege of knowing them for quite a few years. <laughs> yes, indeed. I've uh, seen these girls grow up to beautiful young ladies that uh, really has a heart for God in their families, and I appreciate them tremendously. And I also had the blessing of tying the knot for Ryan and Mia, I believe that was back in 2017. Am I right? Yes, sir. I believe it was in October, wasn't it? It was. It was, and we got it done, and it was such a great blessing. And we really appreciate it. And I've known Mia and Maddie and Sophie and Mary and this family and Randy for some years, and we won't talk about how many. My hair used to be dark then, and now I've turned into a platinum blonde. So uh, anyway, <laughs> amen. But anyway, it's such a blessing today to have this opportunity to dedicate Harrison back to the Lord. Mark records of Jesus and talks about, and he said this, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. And the Bible says that he took, took them up in his arms, and he put his hands upon them, and he blessed them. A child is considered to be a reflection of God's love. And it's one of the greatest blessings that we today can participate in to have children. And then to nurture those children in God's love. And to show them the right way and to bless their lives. God's graced today, your family, guys, with this great and blessed gift. And may he guide you and guard your home and protect you and bless you today. Because as Christ is exalted... He will pour out blessings upon your life in such a glorious way. Baby dedication today. I'm not sure if he's a baby or if he's a half-grown man. I know. Amen. <laughs> but it's an opportunity to thank God for the precious gift of your child and grandchild mm -hmm. and family member. It's an opportunity to publicly to declare your intentions to raise Harrison in a Christian environment, home that is filled with the love of God. And I can tell you through experience, when you fill your home with the love of God before your children, friend, it will reap many blessings in your life and in theirs. It's a benchmark that you can return to from time to time to remember the great blessing that God has afforded you. A family dedication. We're just not here dedicating Harrison, but dedicating this family where the parents commit themselves to abide in and by the biblical standards and principles of God's word and to raise Harrison accordingly as God's standard of his word has dictated for our lives. You'll never go wrong by being a Christian example to your children. Now, there are three reasons for this dedication for Harrison. And number one is this. We're dedicating Harrison to the Lord and praying that God will mightily use him for his kingdom, for his entire life, and that God will raise him up to be a mighty man of God. Secondly, we're dedicating Ryan and Mia to the Lord and praying for God's guidance by grace in being an example to Harrison and to the rest of their family. And we're dedicating ourselves as a church and this family entirely today to pray and to encourage and to lift up this family and to raise Harrison in the goodness, the grace, and the provision of our God. It is an honor for me today as their pastor and friend to dedicate Harrison to the Lord. Man, what a blessing. <laughs> what an honor that I get to share. It's been a few years, hasn't it, guys? Amen. Y'all haven't gotten gray or how it happened. <laughs> Amen. But you, you've been mightily blessed of the Lord. Gone through trials, but God has brought you through what you faced. And he's a mighty God. And he's got a great blessing for us here today. I think he's anxious. He I think anxious. he's ready. He's, he's ready to cry in my hands. He is. Amen. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You've got to see this. I mean... Look at his suspenders with little white hearts on, and, a, and a little red bow tie and bright-eyed and long eyelashes. And I bet he never cries. Not a bit. Not a bit. Never. Yeah. 
What a blessing it is today to stand with this family as we dedicate Harris and let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before your presence with a precious gift in our hands today that you've graced this family with. Harrison is such a great blessing, and we're so thankful for him. We're so thankful today for Ryan, for me, and we're so thankful today for this entire family who has blessed me personally and blessed this church for quite a few years. And Lord, we just commit Harrison to your care, your grace, and your goodness. We dedicate him to you. And God, pray for your guidance, not only for Harrison, but for Ryan and Mia, that, Lord, you will bless them. Cover them with your love and your protection and your provision. Guide them in life as they raise up this precious son, daughter, child. Lord, to be a reflection of the love and the grace of God. May your goodness just be shared upon this entire family. And thank you for them and bless them, Lord, as only you can. Now, Lord, we give Harrison to you in praise and thanksgiving. And we thank you for this great day that you have provided for us. To God be the glory in Jesus' name. And all the church said, amen. amen. It wouldn't be a baby dedication if they didn't cry in my hands. Let it go, buddy. Grab back and let her fly. Amen. What a blessing. I said, who's this guy that's been holding me? Amen. Bless you guys today. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you today. Thanks, Thank you, Carlton. Ryan. God bless you today. <laughs> Where's you. Sophia? Hiding over there. Hi. Oh, you sweet. I remember when this girl was born. She was a preemie. And Randy could take his wedding band and put it over her arm, over her hand, up her arm, all the way to her shoulder. A wedding band, as small as your finger. That... And look at her today. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Woo. Mary. God bless you today. God bless your heart today. Thank you, guys. We love you and appreciate you so much. Bless you mightily. Randy, always a blessing, man. Praise the Lord. David, what a blessing you are to us. Amen. Thank you today. Let's let these folks know that we love them and appreciate them. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Riley Harrison Clark, by the way. I've tried to follow all the rules that tell me what and where and who I'm meant to be and secretly. I've jumped through every single hoop Believing I could somehow prove To all the earth What I was worth I can't be anything Or anyone for anybody else Time to introduce to you my real self. Welcome to the shatter. Welcome to the scar. I am living proof that grace can reach this far. Welcome to the healing. And all that love says I can be Welcome to me I play the game so well at times That life becomes a compromise But in the end, it's all pretend. There's nothing more I could become to make me worthy of God's love. I'm finding out who I am now. 
And this is like a dream But finally my eyes are open wide It's like I'm meeting myself for the first time Welcome to the shatter Welcome to the scar I am living proof that grace can reach this far Welcome to the healing And all that love says I can be Welcome to the shatter Welcome to the scar I am living proof that grace can reach this far. Welcome to the healing and all that love. Welcome to me. Conquering in Christ tonight, uh, this morning rather, Conquering in Christ from Romans chapter 8, 35 through 39. We have been in the book of Romans for some time, spent most of the year last year in it, and we're still there. We've spent basically the first part of this year trying to get out of Romans 8, and I think we may today. We'll see. But uh, here's a great portion of Scripture, and when we come to Romans 8, in the final words of this particular chapter, we find one of the greatest and most majestic portions of Scripture that is contained in the pages of God's Word. I, I keep mentioning this declaration because God wants this truth today to really resonate within our hearts. He wants us to grasp and understand exactly what He's trying to show us here. Romans 8 begins with the very fact today, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus today. And if you're born again and know Christ, you can rejoice in that today. That means the condemnation that was against you has been lifted, amen, by the power of God through Christ. And I hate to say it, but most Christians don't understand grace. We know the word. We even know the little uh, cross that it goes with it. God's riches at Christ's expense. We know all the catchy phrases and all the terminology, but we, we maybe can define it, but we really can't understand it. I tell you, the greatest way to understand grace is to receive it and to experience it and to live it and let it be a part of you today. You know, folks, you better understand God's commitment today to your salvation. This issue of what Christ did for us at the cross, today, without that, we'd have no hope. Today that we'd be most miserable, as the word says, and we would be in that position of condemnation. But because of Christ, because of the cross, because of his death, because of his sacrifice, because of what he did for you and I today, we can know that salvation is of the Lord and that salvation is real and is life changing. Not only is it life changing, but it's eternity changing, amen. It changes us today. So therefore, salvation was in God and salvation was in God before time even began, and it will still be in God even when time shall be no more. Because it's all by God's grace today. Get this, God is committed to your salvation. And if you don't believe that, thumb through the pages of God's word, read about what God did. I mean, this Bible is about the greatest gift that has ever been given to man, and that is the gift of salvation, and that is the gift that came by what Christ accomplished at the cross to you and I. Being in a church does not make you a Christian. Sitting in a worship service does not make you a Christian. Hanging out with Christian people does not make you a Christian. You've got to come with a commitment today of realizing who you are. We've all come to that place in our lives that we have to realize we're lost without Christ. We're broken, we're shattered. Our lives are a mess. We try the process of fixing things in our own lives, but they don't work. We try to turn over new leaves. We try to make different directions. We try to establish new goals. We try new walks. We even get new looks. We even slap a wristband on and thinking, well, surely if I'm wearing a church wristband, that ought to do something before God. You can die just as lost as a goose in a hailstorm with this, this on 
as a person who is saved can. The fact of the matter is today, the difference maker is the salvation that God has made for you and I, that God gave his son, God provided his son, God today has given us new life, and it only comes through the plan that he has provided, and that plan started even when God knew the sinful plight of the heart of mankind, even when Adam and Eve sinned, God already knew it, and God will make a way. You go to Genesis 3.15 and there's your first proclamation in the Bible, your first prophecy in the Bible that God gives us and guess what it concerns? It concerns you and I and what God would do for us in providing salvation that we could come to him and receive him. I hope you're saved today. I pray you know him and if you're not, I would strongly suggest that you better get saved today. Oh, everything is looking good, preacher. Trump's doing good. Stats are good. Economy's up. Job market's improved. That foreign relations has improved. That's not going to do you one dime's worth of good when it comes to you dying. It's not the condition of the world. It's the condition of your heart. And you better make sure that you know Christ is your personal Savior, that you've been born again, and today that you have received the free gift that he offers to every person, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Amen. And you know what's so neat about this great gift that God has provided for us? It's a permanent gift. It's a permeating gift. It's all because of God's grace. It's permanent because God sealed it through his son and the blood atonement that he accomplished at the cross and it permeates us. It gets in you. Amen. And I'm going to tell you when it gets in you, you're not the same anymore. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, you're a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Oh, Lord. That means it permeates into your spirit, into your heart, into your life, and it changes you today. And therefore, you're not the same hell-bent sinner going to hell. Now you're a child of God, and you're going to the heaven that God has prepared for you. But there's some more good news. Because you haven't gotten there yet. You need all the grace of God that he can bestow upon you to live in this mixed-up, messed-up world in which we live today. Thank God it will permeate you. It will change you today. And we're going to see today, it ends today, it begins in Romans 8 with there is therefore no condemnation, but it ends today in the fact that there is no separation for those who are anchored today in the love of God. And that love of God is only today secured by the love of Jesus Christ. If that today, that salvation experience that transforms us today, that gives us that anchor upon the rock, and that rock of our salvation is no other than the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. I'm glad I'm on the rock. I'm glad I'm, I'm like David of old. He inclined unto me, he heard my cry, he brought me up out of a horrible pit. Thank God. He established my going and he set me on the rock. That rock is the rock of my salvation who is no other than the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we enter into this final portion of this passage today, we're, we're going to find these scriptures are giving us something today that we really need. Two things that you really need in your spiritual life. You need energy and you need passion. Amen. So let's read God's word as we stand united in the power of God's grace and his love and his word today. If you're able to stand, fine. If you're not, just stay like you are, where you are. Amen. Starting in Romans 8, starting with verse number 35, it says, oh, here's another question. I tell you, he loaded the gun on us in Romans 8, didn't he? He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Now he's going to deal with a lot of issues. Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, pearl, or sword? Then he says, as it is written, For thy sake we're killed all the day long. We're counted as sheep for the slaughter. But then he turns and he says this, Nay, nay in all these things. How many things? All. I can't hear you. How many things? All, all things. Nay, in all these things, we, we who are in Christ, are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, convinced, no shadow of a doubt here, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, principalities, powers, nor things present, nor things to come, 
nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us, separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Over the next few moments, here's a few things in life that we can today look at from these portions of Scripture that will help us. I find in life we can place your full weight today. You ever been in those situations where you know you were on a bridge? This uh, past Christmas we were down in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and we went up to the top of this mountain, and there was a, a bridge that spanned from one peak to another peak, and it was a swinging bridge. We all being brave souls decided that we was going to get on it and walk it. Along with all the other hundreds of people that were on that area and walking that bridge. And it's about a five foot wide span bridge width wise. And you got traffic going and traffic coming. Well we all felt brave and beefed up. I think we'd been to the men's fellowship beast feast. We was feeling all beefed up. We got about a quarter of a way over that thing. And all those people on that bridge is going, hmm, hmm, hmm. We all made a conclusion. Our best bet was to get off of that swinging bridge and to get our feet back on solid ground. Amen. So let me tell you what. We walked gingerly out there, but brother, our little feet didn't waste no time getting back to the safe of that ground. And as I was standing there and looking at that bridge, I thought, hmm, a few planks that you walk across. Anybody else ever been across? You been across it, Deborah? Chicken. Amen. Y'all been across it? Oh, did y'all go all the way? Oh, aren't y'all brave souls? Amen. And that ain't put us to shame. We got to go back down and go across the whole thing. Yeah, the glass. Yeah, I know. Well, it was windy that night, and it was a mess that night, and it was, wasn't too bad weather-wise, but it was just windy. But uh, I tell you, folks, when I started looking at that, and I saw just planks that you walk on, and nothing but just a cable about that big around on either side that holds that thing up in that span, I thought, hmm, you know, it's not the fall that, that hurts you. It's a sudden stop. Amen. So uh, I decided it was better to put my feet on solid ground. And so that's exactly what happened. So you know what? I really didn't feel at ease in putting my full trust in that swinging bridge. But I'm going to tell you, that's something you can put your trust in. The world may be pushing and pressing against us, and we may feel the things of life that we deal with every day, but I'm glad to tell you today, your full trust can be in Christ, and he will never forsake you, he will never leave you, and he today will never turn away from you today. Let me tell you what, you can know today, you can put your full weight on him because he's a God who can be trusted today. So then I bring this to your attention. How much weight can you put in your relationship with Jesus Christ today? Really, how much weight are you putting in Christ today? Is he just your get you through God? Is he just a pacifier to your life? Is it just a go-to when things are not going good? Let me tell you what, if that's the case, you better be climbing up in his lap with Alba and staying there. Because that's the way life is, isn't it? Today, how much today are you really trusting Christ in your life every day? How many things are you trying to get yourself through when God's already got a solution for you? When God's already made a way for you today that you don't have to live like you're living today? How strong is your faith that binds you today to the Lord Jesus Christ? How big is God in your life? How great is this God that you say that you love? But listen, to say that you love him today then is to live for him, isn't it? It is to desire him and to want him and today to live for him today. It's, is it able to last today? Really? I mean, this relationship, this faith that you say is strong in the Lord? Really today, can it really bear up under the pressures that you face every day or do you fall literally apart? See, life and the struggles and the trials and the pressures of life have a way to reveal where we are in our walk with God, doesn't it? It shows us how strong we are or how strong we are not. 
So this is exactly what Paul is asking when he gets to verse 35 and the closing verses of chapter 8. Last week we dealt with the, the prior four questions that Paul threw out. And today we're going to grasp this final question today in closing this chapter out. Who shall then separate us from the love of Christ? Amen. The who here can be a who or a what. Whatever you face in life today. Verse 37, Paul gives the one word command. And I like this. You say, well, King James has it nay. And that's great. I love it. And that's what I preach and read. But also that word nay means no. <laughs> that word nay is interpreted meaning no. 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 Nothing can separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus today. Nothing is possible to remove, remove you today from the union that you have in Christ. You can't pluck yourself out. No one else can. The church can't remove you. Listen, God sealed you with a hope today that is provided through his son Jesus Christ. This is called eternal security. Amen. The only warning I have for you today is that you better make sure that Jesus is in your heart and just not in your mind. You can know about him, but not know him. You better make sure that you know him. That's exactly what Paul said to the church at Philippi, wasn't it? That I may know him. And that should be our desire is to know the Lord. How do you know him? Because you walk with him. He, he's absorbed into your daily life. You lean upon him. You trust in him today. So I bring this to our theme. And our theme is simply this today. Genuine faith in Christ overcomes all obstacles. I want you to read that with me. I want you to get this. I want you to lean on this. I want you to reside in this. I want you to dwell on this. I want it to become a part of you. I want you to remember this every day. If you have to write it down like some of you are doing, write it down so to help you remember it. If you have to put it on the refrigerator because we all visit it every day, don't we? Or the mirror in the bathroom. Or whatever. Put it somewhere where you got to see it. Let's say it together on the count of three. One, two, three. Genuine faith in Christ overcomes all. Come back. How many obstacles? All what? Obstacles. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. If you're a Christian today, there's nothing to fear, but we live in a very fearful and troublesome time, don't we? If you're living by fear today, then there's an absence of faith in your life. If you're overcome by fear, if you're just always worried, sick about everything, there's an absence of faith today. Listen, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith, he said, Hebrews tells us that faith is, it's impossible to please God without faith. So you've got to have faith. Let me give you several things today that maybe will help you. One, genuine faith overcomes your circumstances today. And I'm going to guide you through these verses to show you what Paul is trying to tell us. Paul gives us a list in verse 35, and he gives us seven particular things. Well, seven is the number of completion. God always does a complete work in our life, even when we're facing adversity, doesn't he? So this is really, if you look at this in, in, in true context of what it is, and you go back and you look at Paul's life, you see that this, this is really a biological sketch today of Paul's life and what he's experienced and what he has gone through. In 2 Corinthians, Paul then, he talks about and gives us that list of things that he'd encountered and faced in life. So Paul lived in persecution. He lived in problems. He lived in perplexities. And Paul knew, and he said, these things are then are circumstances and maybe Maybe today you don't have them to the, to the height and depth and to the, the width that Paul had them, but we all have those things in our life, don't we? Your life is not as perfect as you might want people to think that everything is just sunshiny and smiles and happy every day. It's not. Life gets tough, but God brings you through. Oh, I'm glad today there's a great God who's on our side. Circumstances are part of life. And I would like to tell you today, just because you got saved doesn't mean today you never have circumstances in your life. Just as Paul and just for you and I, we all today have those circumstances. So in verse 35, Paul used the term tribulation, distresses, and persecution. 
Three areas there. Tribulation implies being squeezed. You ever get squeezed? I get squeezed every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Squeezed by the circumstances of life. You get victory over something, here comes something else. It squeezes you, just like an orange. You know, that orange, you get that thing and you squeeze the juice out of it, amen. The devil is trying to squeeze the joy of the, Lord, of the Lord out of your life. And today, you've got to realize today, if he says you're more than a conqueror through him that loves you today, whatever the devil is trying to squeeze you with or your circumstances today are trying to dictate, it cannot squeeze the power and the presence of our awesome God out of you today, amen. So these things squeeze us today, then distresses today. Distresses today, hems us in today on pressure. Anybody got any pressure going on in your life right now? I'm not talking about atmospheric pressure. I'm talking about the pressures of trials and difficulty. Anybody, I mean, am I talking to a bunch of people that are perfect and they never have a problem? Or are you living in pressures today? Shout, amen. amen. Welcome to life. We all have those things. And then he talks about persecution, facing. Listen, if you're living for Christ, you're going to suffer persecution. Amen. So Paul was saying, there is no stress, pressure, nor persecution today that can separate you from the love of God, which is found in Christ Jesus. As I was saying, it can never break you free from Christ because you don't want to be broken free from him. He is your life and your strength of your life. He is your joy. He is your everything. He is your crown of life today. And you realize how magnificent our God is today. No stress can take you away from Jesus. Amen. That's why you need to find that hiding place. And get with the Lord and know how good he is when the stress and the pressures and persecutions you're facing in life. Just get alone with God and be still and know that he is God. Amen. You've got to let these things absorb your spirit today. Also, Paul goes through the basic needs of life or the necessities that we face. So this includes famine and, and nakedness. He said famine and nakedness, which means food and clothing. Amen. I'm glad you're all clothed today. Thank you. No matter. Thank you, Jesus. No matter what needs you have in life, your faith can stand it. You can't stand it, but your faith in Christ can. Amen. You're not all that in a bag of chips and a Pepsi Cola on the side. You may think you are, but I'm going to use bad English here. You ain't. We're nothing, but he's everything. He takes nothing to make something out of it. Now we're somebody going somewhere because we're children of the most high God. Come on, church. Whatever you face today, it's not bigger than God. Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. When, when the pressures come and your faith can withstand whatever you're facing today. Some of you are going through some hells and high waters right now. But guess who's got you held and he's going to get you through. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, and, and, and then that last foundation, he talks about foundations of life. And, and he, he brings to our attention, he talks about pearl and sword. Pearl and sword is danger and death. <laughs> so faith in Christ can withstand the dangers of death and the difficulties in life, can't it? Amen. So all of these things are like bugs on the windshield of a car. You're driving down the highway, bing, bing, bing. But let me tell you one thing, yeah. But they don't slow the car down, do they? You keep going. And that's the way these things are in life. They're like bugs on the windshield. They do not slow you down. As a matter of fact, it propels you to get to wherever you're going sooner. You, I drove up to, um, I'd love to have some bugs the other morning. Tuesday morning, I went up to Salem for Jim's surgery to be there with him. I'm telling you what, man, God opened the faucet and it was raining. It was foggy. I got up early. I left home. I had to get there by 6. And I was going up 460. And I think every truck in Virginia got on 460 that morning. And it was raining. It was foggy. It looked like those trucks wanted my lane, my car, and my life. Amen. No disrespect to truck drivers. But, man, I tell you what. Those boys did not have enough coffee the night before. 
And so I debated. I got to Bedford, and I said, Lord, Jesus, have mercy. Lord, I'm about at the age of getting ready to turn back and go back home. And I said, keep going. So I kept going. And I thought, oh, thank you, Lord. I finally got to Bonsac. I said, Lord, I'm just sick and tired of 460. I, I do, do you want me to go on through? You say, you talk to the Lord like that? Yeah. Amen. Yeah, you say, you're nuts. Well, I'm screwed on the right boat. <laughs> I hope you are too. So I got the bond sack. And I said, Lord, uh, do I stay on this wretched 460 or do I swing through bond sack, get over on 81? And my, something in me said, 81's worse than it is over here. What are you thinking about? You lost your mind? It looked like a car just autopilot. <sighs> Made an abrupt right, and here I go. I'm headed to 81. I got on 81. I'm telling you, it was the smoothest driving I had in a long time. It was no trucks. It was no traffic. It was just me and the Lord and going 80 miles an hour and booking it down, 81. Amen. <laughs> and getting there on time. Amen. I tell you, back on 460, it was rough traveling. And I thought, eyes, don't fail me now. <laughs> Amen. Lord have mercy. I'm telling you, when it comes to God, whatever you're facing, God will bring you through it today. You got to keep going. You got to keep persevering, pressing, not quitting. Amen. With God. What we have in Christ is sufficient. Secondly, today, genuine faith overcomes all suffering. You, you can't build a life thinking that life is one big Disney vacation all the time. You think, man, I'm going to put Disney in my backyard. Sooner or later, you're going to have to step out your backyard. I know this is not what you want to hear, but let me tell you, suffering is normal in the Christian life. Some of you have gone through it and going through it right now. The suffering we face today is not what really Paul reached back into the Psalms. He, he, talked, to, he talked about that in, in verse in, in, in verse 36, he reached back into the Psalms and talked about, about that. And it's no new thing for the Lord to permit, listen to me, to permit his children to suffer. I don't understand how good God would let good people suffer. It's because today you're living in a fallen world and trouble comes to everybody saved and lost. But listen, we have one on our side today that brings us through what we face in life. Amen. So this is a part of the Christian experience. Suffering is intertwined today in your relationship because it's in the suffering that your strength in God, your faith in God, your resilience of trusting God will prove itself. Amen. You've got to have these things to toughen you up in Christ today. Even in the suffering, we can stand on the fact today and all these things were more, more than conquerors through him that loved us. So Paul said, loved, L-O-V-E-D. Loved us. That means what? Past tense? No, listen. The love was exhibited in the past. It was secured. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus showed us he loved us. He sacrificed. He gave his life. And he suffered for us in the past that we could have him for the future. Amen. And in the present. Suffering is a part of who we are. No, we don't jump up in the morning and say, Woo, I want to suffer for Jesus today. I don't think any of you got up and felt that way this morning. But it comes our way. And your faith in God is what brings you through what you're facing. It's a part of who we are. There's no utopia in life. If you're looking for it, you're, you're barking up the wrong trees, a fellow said. Suffering is woven into this life. It's a part of our living. And if you want to be united with Christ and his love today, listen, you're going to have to be woven into this story of suffering. But looking at the end result is we are victorious in Christ Jesus. Amen. Suffering actually today, you know what it does? It draws you closer to God. It unites you with Christ. It encourages your life. It strengthens you. It builds you up. It makes you strong in the Lord and the power of his might today. Many times we suffer because, you know why? Because we're close to him. Because you know what we're typically doing? We want to blame, we want to blame somebody is suffering. Some Christian is going through a great trial. I wonder what happened in their life to get them out of sorts with God. They didn't do anything. They're serving God. They love God. They're faithful to God, but they're suffering because God's got something even greater for their life today. Amen. Thirdly, 
genuine faith overcomes any power. We're almost through. Listen, there's, there's not a power in creation nor in the universe today that can separate you from the love of Christ. Paul gives us four pairs of twos and two catch-alls today. It's the only way I know to put it. The first list, list is called death and life. So Jesus took the sting out of death and took the victory out of the grave. That's what he said in the book of Corinthians, didn't he? 1 Corinthians 15. Death and grave cannot separate you from the love of Christ. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Amen. Amen. Secondly, principalities nor powers. This is what we call the spiritual realm today. Man, the devil is tough and hard and mean. Yeah, but God is good and God is tougher. Amen. Amen. Neither angels nor rulers can separate you today from the love of Christ. There's nothing in the spiritual realm today that can separate you from the love that you have with God in Christ. Thirdly, time. Whether present or future today. We do not know what the future of time will hold for us today, but there's no worry because God will be there. He's promised that. As he was with you yesterday and the days before, and as he's with you now, he shall be there in the future for you. That's a promise from God. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. No matter what comes today, no matter what comes tomorrow, none of that can separate you from the love of Christ. Fourthly is the universe. That's height nor depth. So this means that the, the full expanse of all of creation from the very core and the center of the earth to the far corners of the galaxy, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Now, have you seen? I just painted for you over the last 45 seconds to a minute. Everything that you can go through what Paul records there in the latter part of that chapter. And, and it all culminates with this. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Amen. Paul is building an altogether case. I mean, if he was a prosecuting attorney, he has built the case today for God that nothing, nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Because of that, then you can jump up and say, no, everything may be against me, but no. I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved me. Amen. That's what God's done for you today. Have you received that? Paul is today showing us that nothing that exists can touch your union with Christ. And there's a fifth thing. And this is kind of the inclusive. This is a catch-all. Everything, power or created things. None can separate you from the love of Christ. Now, after reading this, you know what you should have? When you walk out of here today, you know what you should be absorbed with? You should be absorbed with great confidence today. Where you've been cowering, and you've been fearful, and you've been worrying, and you've been wondering. It's time today to put that down and lift up the cross and follow Jesus. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Amen. So you can lift your head up today, church. I said you can lift your head up and you can walk through anything that you're facing today, not because of your strength, but because of him who is greater than whatever you shall face today. But you know what it is? Because when you're weak and frail, you can't carry yourself, but it's him who picks you up. It's him that carries you and pulls you ever closer to himself and brings you into his fellowship and whispers into your spirit that peace and that power that only God can give you. This is the whole very hallmark of our faith today that we have in Christ. Could it be today the reason that you're panic-stricken in your life today or you're falling apart or you're unsure, or you're questioning God is because your faith is faulty. That's not the way God saved you. He saved you with a sure faith today. If your faith is faulty, you're not building on Christ and his love. You're trying to build on your intellect and your ability and your strength. And I'm going to tell you, you, you are no match for what you face. But God is. 
It's not based on you to hold it together. Amen. He who began a good work in you will perform it, he said. And he will carry you through today. You've got to learn to put your faith in the fact today that you have truly trusted in Christ. If you believe in him, how many of you trust in Christ for your salvation today? Shout amen. amen. You can trust him to bring you through everything else. Because the same God that plucked you out of the snare of Satan and lifted you up and brought you in and made you his child and established your going, has given you his promises, is the same God that will be with you and never fail you. It's not time for a faulty faith. It's time for a faith that's anchored in Christ. So today you have two great hopes. One hope is you're more than a conqueror. Shout amen. Amen. You're not just, a, I'm just getting through hanging on. No, stop it. You're not enduring. You're trusting. You're trusting the God who said you're more than a conqueror through him. You are more than a conqueror in Christ. And secondly, your victory is in Christ alone. How many of you need a victory today? Shout amen. amen. The only way you can be a conqueror today is through Christ. And if you've never received him, I invite you to him today. For he says, all that will come to me, I won't cast you out. I'll receive you. I'll change you. I'll be your God. I'll be your Savior. And I will bring you through. And today, if you are a Christian today and you're struggling with the challenges that you're facing in life, the things that's weighting you down and the pressures that you're feeling and the squeeze that you're getting in your life today, listen, God will bring you through that and give you the victory that you need because Nay, you're more than a conqueror. And secondly today, listen, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Father, thank you today for the season of your word. I pray now that, Lord, you will deal with our hearts. Are you here today in lost preacher? I don't know Christ as my Savior. If I had to face death today, I don't have firm, fixed assurance today that heaven would be my home. I won't embarrass you. Won't call you my name, won't come to you. I'll just pray for you. Preacher, I, I just need to be saved. Bottom line today, I should do one thing. It's to acknowledge your need. Just slip your hand up and say, I need to be saved. Anyone today? Preacher, I need to be saved. I need to be saved. All right, thank you. If you need that, you can come to Christ, and he will do that very thing. Come to him realizing you're a sinner. Recognize Christ died for you on the cross, and ask him to come into your heart and your life and save you. On the authority of God's word, he'll do it. But how many of you are struggling? How many of you today got faulty faith? How many of you today are going through trials and troublesome times? Take what God has given us in these words and wear them to his glory today. Would you stand to your feet? <laughs> Father, I pray as, this, as the music today for invitation begins, I pray there'll be a drawing effect, a magnetism of the spirit of God to draw us and to woo us, and to pull us to altars of prayer, to cry out to God and to know that you are a God who loves us and you will never separate us from your love. Pour out your grace upon your people. Will you come right now? Will you come? Crying out, calling out, seeking the Lord. He can change your life, but how bad do you want to change? How long do you want to stay in what you're in and continue to struggle through what you're going through? Why don't you bring it to Christ? Come on. How can it matter? Come on, bring it to him. He'll hear you cry, he'll hear you call. He will give you the help that you need. For that's his promise.